Good morning, folks. Welcome back to the Philosophy for Philistines channel. I was down at the Freedom Convoy this morning talking to the folks, and everything was peaceful and calm last night, thank God. I have several thoughts about what is going on and why. And since I've spent a great deal of time and effort thinking about our current situation, <laughs> I'm going to have an honest heart-to-heart -heart discussion with you about what I have observed personally. These are my opinions. And then I'm going to share something from Dostoevsky. I, found it, I find it extremely odd that musicians have favored a lockdown that's literally destroyed their industry. They are behaving irrationally to the, to the detriment of their own livelihood. And not just livelihood, because musicians don't play <laughs> for the money, necessarily. I mean, obviously, they have to make a living. But it's not a very good way to make a living. And few become wealthy doing it. They do it because it's a passion. And since it is a passion, which some, some could call a calling, I am utterly appalled at how readily they relinquish their rights to a state that is robbing them of the ability to do the very thing that they are most passionate about. A dear friend of mine, Shrimp Daddy, Mike Reed, from the East Coast, now living on the East Coast, mentioned this, this fact on his social media profile yesterday, and I made a few comments about it. Uh, Mike himself is uh, a socialist, but he's fed up with the overreach of the state, damaging his industry. And you know, the real issue here is that everything today is being politicized. And this is no way to resolve what has now become an existential crisis. And I've noticed this with regard to our friends and family in Norway as well. Even as Canadians risk all, at their own expense, to protest our government's attack on our charter rights, our friends and family abroad haven't even asked what the protest is about, whether it is peaceful or not, how the people involved in the protest actually behave, especially since the trucks are parked right in front of the Norwegian embassy. And therefore, my wife has to walk through these throngs every morning and every afternoon as she leaves work. I'm gobsmacked at the biggest peaceful protest of its kind in the world one we are so intimately familiar with, hasn't evoked one single question from the folks in Scandinavia whom we know. It's not merely distance which separates people. It's the enormous gulf between how we perceive the world and how they do. With this exception, though, I'm intensely curious as to why they think the way that they do. I'm intensely interested in what makes them tick while they utterly disregard anything outside of their own frame of reference. And the same can be applied to the musicians. So I'm happy to report that I spoke to the folks this morning. Everything's peaceful downtown. The cops were behaving themselves, as were the protesters. And, of course, this is causing waves all throughout the West as people become aware of the nature of our uh, constitutional crisis in Canada and how willing Canadians are to fight back against it. And I heard uh, one, one influencer state, I forget whether it was Dave Rubin or uh, one, of, one of those guys, he said, usually things start in, in America and move north. 
That's not true. We entered the First World War and the Second World War to defend liberty in Europe long before America got involved. Okay? Canadians sacrificed generations of young men and young women on the battlefield. Many dying, of course, giving the ultimate sacrifice to defend freedom while America still dragged her heels. So let's read what Dostoevsky has to say about why man is not a piano key. His take on human nature and why humans are essentially irrational creatures. Dostoevsky, the only psychologist from whom I've learned, from whom I've anything to learn. That was written by Friedrich Nietzsche. In 1864, one of the most brilliant writers of all time, Fyodor Dostoevsky, published his Notes from Underground. It is considered to be the first existential novel. And it is no wonder why Nietzsche, the first and greatest psychologist among philosophers, considered Dostoevsky to be such a great psychologist. Dostoevsky, Dostoevsky's understanding of human nature and how well he managed to describe it in his works is arguably unmatched in the history of world literature. In Notes from Underground, Dostoevsky gives us a look into the thoughts of a bitter, resentful, and isolated narrator who remains unnamed, so he is often referred to by readers and critics as the underground man. So these are the words of the underground man in, in Dostoevsky's novel. Gentlemen, let us suppose that man is not stupid. Indeed, one cannot refuse to suppose that, if only from the one consideration that, if man is stupid, then who is wise? But if he is not stupid, he is monstrously ungrateful. In short, one may say anything about the history of the world, anything that might enter the most disordered imagination. The only thing one can't say is that it's rational. The very word sticks in one's throat. And indeed, this is the odd thing that is continually happening. There are continually turning up in life moral and rational persons, sages and lovers of humanity who make it their object to live all their lives as morally and rationally as possible to be, so to speak, a light to their neighbors, simply in order to show them that it is possible to live morally and rationally in the world. And yet, we all know that those very people, sooner or later, have been false to themselves, play some queer trick, often a most unseemly one. Now I ask you, what can be expected of man since he is endowed with such strange qualities. Shower upon him every earthly blessing. Drown him in a sea of happiness so that nothing but bubbles of bliss can be seen on the surface. Give him economic prosperity such that he should have nothing else to do but sleep, eat cakes, and busy himself with the continuation of his species. And even then, out of sheer ingratitude, sheer spite, man would play you some nasty trick. He would even risk his cakes and would deliberately desire the most fatal rubbish, the most uneconomical absurdity, simply to introduce into all this positive good sense his fatal, fantastic element. It is just his fantastic dreams, his vulgar folly that he will desire to retain simply in order to prove himself 
as though, as though that were so necessary, that men are still men, and not the keys of a piano, which the laws of nature threaten to control so completely that soon one will be able to desire nothing but by the calendar. And that is not all. Even if man really were nothing but a piano key, even if this were proved to him by rational science and mathematics, even then he would not become reasonable, but would purposely do something perverse out of simple ingratitude, simple, simply to gain his point. And if he does not find means, he will contrive, contrive destruction and chaos will contrive sufferings of all sorts only to gain his point. He will launch a curse upon the world, and, not, and as only man can curse, it is his privilege, the primary distinction between him and other animals, may be, may be by his curse alone he will retain his object, that is, convince himself that he is a man and not a piano key. If you say that is that all this too can be calculated and tabulated, chaos and darkness and curses, so that the mere possibility of calculating it beforehand would stop it all, and reason would reassert itself, then man would purposely go mad in order to be rid of reason and gain his point. I believe in it. I answer for it. For the whole work of man really seems to consist in nothing but proving himself every minute that he is a man and not a piano key. It may be at the cost of his skin. It may be by cannibalism. And this being so, can one help being tempted to rejoice that it has not yet come off and that desire still depends on something we don't know? This, is ex this describes the wealthy elite class that look down their noses at us as moral inferiors. I don't like people that think they're better than we are. I really don't. And I've met them firsthand. People that have told me on no uncertain terms that their form of governance that their system, which demands utter compliance and turns men into piano keys, is so morally superior to anything that I conceive of, could conceive of, that I must be utterly ignorant of it. And now they see that the attempt to turn other men into piano keys has resulted in a burst of rejection of that idea that the people the peaceful protesters downtown are demanding that these people that actually believe themselves to be morally superior to be intellectually superior to the truckers should get their goddamn boots off their neck and restore our constitutional liberty these are things to think about. Mankind is utterly destructive, which is why I believe in personal liberty. Let every man make choices for himself and quit trying to do for others for their own good what is better for them because, in fact, you don't even know what's better for yourself. Have a great day. This is why you tune into the Philosophy for Philistines channel just to get conundrums like this explained to you. Subscribe, ring the bell, and share the heck out of my vlogs. Have a great day.